Audio is going. It's audio, audio recording time. time. Jesus. Oh, man. Jesus. All Hopefully right. that's good. It's great. I don't know how far away I am. I see, I see stuff going like buzz, buzz, buzz. We're live in three, two, one, and go. Shut up and sit down. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Live on the Fives. I wasn't even live on the Fives because I have my microphone off. Yahoo. Uh oh, we oh, have an it's echo. Got a- oh, no. it's <laughs> it's oh, we did it. Yes. Oh, my God. We did, we did it, it already. We already screwed up. Oh, my God. There we go. You had your Twitch up, didn't ya? I did. I was trying to just, be. Just yank the speakers out. Just yank them out. <laughs> That's why I did. I just went, whoop. There we go. They're what gone. a great way to start episode 160 of Third Shift. That's how we do it. 160? I thought we were 172. Well, oh, you know, man. we just tell you stuff to make you happy. No, Multiple that is, that is now that's so false. I don't even know where to start with that one. We tell you things to make <laughs> you tell me things to upset go. me and make me sad. That's usually the way it goes. As evidenced by the Discord uh-huh. today. <laughs> All right. Well, I, you know, I'm here, and, and you know my voice by now. I hope if you've been listening for a long time, it's Danny, and I'm I'm here with uh, two other people. Hi, Danny, and you're an alcoholic. I, I might be. It's it's very mm-hmm. possible. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm here with uh, Eric. He is one Hello. of the hosts of Third Shift, and the other one is Matt. Hello, everyone. He's wearing a fun hat tonight, as usual, for Live on the Fives. This is correct. I've already ruined my gimmick by talking normally in the <laughs> first part of the you show. You got thrown off. You don't understand why I have Russian accent on. It's because I have Russian hat. If you don't understand and see it, it's because you don't see me live on the fives. He's Mark. You should just, it's falling apart. It's, it's going. <laughs> I can't. I wasn't ready. I was ready to do it the whole time. <laughs> And then you fell. Yep. No, there's no way you could. You, there's no way you're going to maintain that. It wasn't going to happen. <laughs> it's impossible. Well, I wasn't going to do it the whole show or anything. No. But for the first intro bit, I was going to try it. And you know what? I just I got too excited because I'm live and I get, 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 I get yeah, like, you get them live jitters. Yeah, I'm like me too. I can't wait to see chat. <laughs> chat, like, chat, chat, chat. What's happening? Chat. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Listen, chat. All right, so you you know how we all start the show off? Let, let's learn yeah. about everyone's week. Let's oh, let's. Oh boy. Uh, Let's. let's let's start with uh, let's say uh, Matt. <laughs> That's right, because I'm the greatest man who's ever lived. Everybody, sit down, pull up a chair. Uncle Matt's going to tell you about his week. I did three things this week. Actually, I did four things. First thing I did this week went and saw "Come From Away" at the Wharton Center. Beautiful musical about you know in the aftermath of 9/11 when all the planes scattered to the four winds of the earth and nobody was allowed to fly uh-huh. anywhere. It's a nice story about. I think it was new. New Newfoundland, a small town in Newfoundland, true story where a bunch of planes got put down in this old airport from like the 50s. And everybody from, you know, this small Canadian town was donating time and money and food and, you know, welcoming people into their houses. Really nice story, really kind of emotional story, too, because it really kind of took you back to those dark days right after when everyone was freaking out. Nobody knew Mm -hmm. what was happening. But then at the same time, it was a really fun, warm, you know, it's a good story about good people doing good stuff. So it was it was really kind of an interesting emotional ride through that, but really great show. And then the the one thing that I didn't ever spoil from Hamilton, the, the gimmick they do on the stage, I just spoiled it right there with my hands a little bit. <laughs> they did it here too. So I don't know if that's something that Wartonson is just going to have from now on and use in everything, or if this is like a, a production that since Hamilton came out and did it, maybe other shows are using it too. But that was really cool. It really helps make, in Hamilton and this one, makes just everything more engaging. Like transitions from scene to scene, just the scenes in general. Really cool stuff. So Come From Away was great. Then, like the very next day, and a to- totally tonal different shift, I went and saw It Chapter 2. I enjoyed that a lot too. It was pretty good. I liked it a lot more than the first one because there was a lot, more, a lot less children just saying horrible to each other nonstop the whole time because I never did that when I was a kid so I was just like this is mm, that's that's weird anyway but I like chapter two a lot but then the next day after that I think I went and saw Hustlers the Jennifer Lopez movie which was pretty good too they did a lot of really interesting like presentation 
stuff in that movie, like when a scene was happening with something happening, the audio was presented differently or there was, you know, some cool camera work or something. So it was, you know, kind of a, I expected just a basic movie and I got some really interesting stuff out of it. So it, that was really cool. And then, of course, I f-ing played Borderlands 3 all the time. <laughs> All the time, stream it forever, <laughs> play it every day. Like I play it so much, and it's well, – well, we'll get into what do we think about it in a little bit. That's right. But man. now it's time to throw it to whoever else's week is up next. I'm going to say, Eric, how was your week, my buddy? Hey, well, you know, I feel sad because you did so many things, Matt. And I, I'm like, wow, Matt was a busy bee, and I was not mm. a busy bee. I did want to ask – Spoiler free ish ish before mm-hmm. I go on to my main fruit little whatever the hell I did nothing. And it too, I have not seen uh-huh. this by the way, everybody. <clears throat> I've been really yeah. hoping to, but because of its length, I don't know if it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Did they go into the Stephen King craziness, no. or did no? They didn't. They didn't. They didn't add all that in there, and just that it came from someplace else. Okay. Like it was like... Well, that's kind of mostly. Yeah. Okay, that's good enough. By God, I don't care. Oh, I'm so interested to see it. Oh, well, we'll see. Maybe yeah. I'll get to it. But that's what I was going to do this weekend, everybody. My intention was to go see It Chapter 2, but because of time constraints and things we were up to, it just wasn't working out. I did, however, go to some f- uh, friends of the family, and we hung out, and we did a nice little dinner shindig. And it was strange because they planned it for a Saturday. And I was like, that's real odd. Why would we do this on a Saturday? Typically, we do this on a weeknight, you know, have dinner, talk for an hour or two, everybody goes home, bada bing, bada boom. Mm-hmm. Why'd y'all have prime real estate, you know, Saturday night? And I didn't get it until all of a sudden they're like, hey, you want a shot? You want a drink? And I'm, of course, going, nah, I'm good, I'm good. And then they convinced, you know, the wife to have some. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, the, the plan was to try to get us to stay over and, like, mingle and have fun and party and do all sorts of things. And I was like, no, y'all don't understand. Uh, Borderlands 3 <laughs> is at my house right now. Y'all don't, get, y'all, yeah. don't get, y'all don't get what you're trying to do right here, all right? You don't understand. Mm-hmm. You are messing with the plan. You're screwing, <laughs> you're screwing the pooch over here. Mm-hmm. So, of course, I'm just sitting there like, da, 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 da. Oh, I'm, you know, just in my monocle, super ha, 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 ho, ho, ho. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I got stuck over there doing all that until, I don't know what time it was, 9.30, until I finally was like, all right, for real, my children mm-hmm. need to go home and go to bed. This is, this has to happen. Mm-hmm. So, got home, got my Borlands in. Played Borderlands Friday all day. We streamed it. Had some hiccups here and there, but we got to it. No big mm-hmm. deal. Everything's all right. Played on Sunday. Played on Monday. Played on Tuesday. Played on Wednesday. Here we are mm-hmm. on Thursday. I want to play, but we're doing live on the fives because we love all of you. <laughs> That's right. And beyond that, like I told you just a minute ago, my all my ladies in my family have begun their dance classes, doing all the cool shtick. We're getting all the fall season stuff going on. We're adjusting to the schedules. And that's it in my life. That's all I have done. It is crazy. It is bananas. But hey, here we are. What about you, Danny? Um, my life has been filled with Borderlands 3. <laughs> and for a minute there, I didn't think it was going to be because... Um, I'm still back ordered from the place I ordered from. <laughs> so I don't know when I'm ever going to get my physical copy, if I'm ever going to. And I might be missing out on all the fun pre order stuff, which is a, a huge bummer. I should have just stuck with Amazon, but I chose against it. And I, I yeah, suffering the consequences. <laughs> Now you're paying the piper. <laughs> mm. But an awesome person. I don't know how to say it. (laughs) I'm like, I get choked up every time I think about how someone would just, here, I want you to play Borderlands, so here you go. And I'm playing Borderlands, and I'm super thankful for it. And yeah, that's what I've been doing all week, is playing Borderlands. And As you should. Yeah, I'm trying Mm -hmm. to keep up with you guys, so I don't get spoiled. Not gonna happen. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Every time I get on and I see Danny level 20, I'm like, nope, five levels today. Got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I figured I'm sleeping two hours tonight. <laughs> I don't care. Got to go. Yeah. I figure you guys are trying to stay ahead of me, so I can't say I beat the game before you. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> I'm not. I'm just. I'm just playing. <laughs> Eric's just lost. He I don't do know that. what. I don't ever know what I'm doing. <laughs> I am keeping up with that though. I'll tell you that. That's true. Nice. But not intentionally. I'm just playing, and then I go, "Oh, that's where Matt left off." Coincidentally, that's where I have to leave off. <laughs> well, and, and for me, since I started streaming it, like I want to just play it on stream. Yeah. And I can't. I don't want to be like, oh, hey, I also got like ten more levels, and my dog is super cool now, and now I'm on this other planet, and have to explain the story during the next stream. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, well, I can play for two, three hours at a clip, but then it's it's time to go and like eat food or do something or like like I always tell Eric, it's time to like not be watching a screen for a while and just go. It's true. I don't know. Go <laughs> roll in the grass. <laughs> go roll in the grass. Be, nice. Good. Be a human being at some point. Nah. <laughs> Overrated. I'm not a human for eight and a half hours a day. Why should I? <laughs> I see a lot of human beings every day, and they're not impressing me whatsoever, so I'm pretty mm. I think I'm good. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, I also had another Good Samaritan thing happen to me. I was I was going through the fast food drive through and got up to pay for my meal, and it had already been paid for by the person in front of me, so I, that was really cool. Nice. <laughs> I kind of think those are awkward sometimes, though, because I'm like, well, should I, should I like pay for the next person's meal? I know. What if it's like a family of 12, <laughs> right? and then all of a sudden I spend $72, <laughs> and mm. then I'm in like so much trouble, I don't even understand what's going to happen. <laughs> I've done it before, <laughs> and it, it feels good, so it was nice to be on the receiving end for once, and to know mm-hmm. how it maybe felt for someone else. <laughs> See, when you said, I'm going through the fast, and then you went on to say food drive through I for some reason, my head went, well, she was watching the Fast and Furious movies all back to back. I was going <laughs> through the Fast and Furious no. franchise, just <laughs> hammering it out, and then a good Samaritan gave me Fast 8. <laughs> Or, F- or Fate of the Furious. There, I remembered it. I, remember it. I, actually, I actually have it. If you want it, the janitor who burned me a copy randomly oh, gave it to right. me. I got one. <laughs> no, not not going through the Fast and the Furious. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. I Maybe don't know. Maybe should be Borderlands 3. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> so that was us individually this week. Together as a team this week, we did ig 2 episode 62. I hate doing IG2G now. I hate it. Okay, I'm just going to put out the live on fives right now. I don't ever want to do IG2G ever again. Okay. Because every time I do it, I find three goddamn releases. And I'm like, oh, I got to get this game. I got to spend $180 this week alone. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Every single time for the past four to five to six to 20 IG2Gs, yep. I find amazing games. And I have to talk about them. I go, man, that's a game I got to get. Got to, let me put that on the back order. <laughs> Look at them all. Look at them all. I hate it. It's, it makes me mad. It makes me grumpy. <laughs> I know my Steam wish list is like getting so huge now. Just mm. listening to you guys on IG2G talk about really cool games that I want to play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just had to pre order a game for 90 goddamn dollars. Oh, <laughs> just, no. just the other day. Cheese of Pete. I mean, I have to get the collector's edition. It's going to have a stand. It's going to have an art, art book, soundtrack. It's gonna, oh, man, it's going to be good. It's not. I don't, <laughs> maybe it's going to be good. Perhaps. Oh, it's going to be good. Well, I you know. know. You know. You heard it on IG2G. Uh-huh. I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, I, I agree. Every time I do that, it just goes, oh, yeah, I was, I was interested in that one. I kind of wanted that one. I'd like to play that one. Mm. Oh, that one would be cool to get to if I ever had some free time. And I just realized that, man, there's so many things slipping through my fingers that I'm never going to mm. get a chance to play. All these great games and good stuff. Which leads us to, right back to where we were talking about how people are saying that this was a slow year, and we're like, y'all are out of your dang minds. This is insane. No, There's so many good games this year. Anybody who says there aren't is just living in a hole waiting for the mm. AAA of the aaa titles, and that's all I'm going to play. <laughs> They're just waiting for Call mm. of Duty to hit, and then, well, that's the only game sold this year. Exactly. Oh, jeez. So, I don't know. I had a good time with the episode. And, of course, on that one, if you didn't catch it, you should. Definitely this time, everybody here listening on Third Shift, because me and Matt mm. go into a whole bunch of, oh, how much we love Borderlands 3, because, well, we had to, obviously. It's a pertinent topic mm. on both this show and that one currently, because it's brand new, it's out, everyone's playing it. It's the it's the talk of the town, so we had to kind of give our little two shticks about what we love as well, so you're going to want to tune into that, get some finer details that we may not say here, depending on how the conversation goes. That's right. And hey, speaking of shows with great games on them, where we talk all about games, 
This this is ones that we actually can play. I finally got the August What You Playing up, and I made great references in that post. I'm very very sad that nobody has responded to that post to say <laughs> I remember that character that you're referencing in the post. So if you if you have the three dollar up tier, go check it out and then praise me for my awesome GIF <laughs> and character selection. <laughs> give, give me the love. I want it. I need it. <laughs> Shower me with your adoration. <laughs> Yes, please. Fantastic, man. That's beautiful. And you know what else we get showered with? Every single episode on Third Uh Shift. Shift codes for Golden Keys and Borderlands 3 now. Oh, my God. We got some shift codes for Golden Keys and Borderlands 3, both from our buddy Randy Pitchford and from our buddy at DG Shift Codes, who had people submit to him not only shift codes that he could give away, like the three three Golden Uh Key pre-order from GameStop codes, but people who had the Diamond Loot Chest Edition were like, hey, here's a shift code that works for everybody. I'll send it to you so you can send it around. And I felt a little dirty but cashing that in because I didn't pay for it. But if it works for everybody, it works for everybody. So share the wealth. So props to those people. Props to DG Shift Codes. Props to the third shift me VIP reporter at 10K Beers on Twitter who's given us even more VIP codes. I'm going to scoop them right now. Because I just got an email from Borderlands 3, like right now. They've given this one out already, right? Email email code, all Borderlands all day. I don't think they have. Mm-mm. Boom, I just scooped you, Sean. You're not going to realize it until you tomorrow know that when you, you listen sniped. to this. Because you're not in the chat. I don't see you getting mad about it. So, <laughs> scoop. That's a scoop for me. Right to you. And I will say this to everybody. The ones Randy Pitchford's been doing, at least to my knowledge, have been exclusive timed ones. So I would encourage yeah. you to be on Twitter because he'll post and say, hey, we're testing some stuff. We're going to go live with this code. It's only going to be live for a couple hours. And sure enough, that bad boy is only there and live for a couple hours. So if you're really mm. aching and itching to get you some of them golden keys, you better be on Twitter paying attention to Randy. Otherwise, you might miss out on a few of them. I have not missed out on any of them because if you don't know, I love my golden keys. Oh, boy, I love my golden keys that I just hoard, hoard, never use. (laughs) And I feel like this time, I mean, obviously it's been a long time since I've cashed in golden keys in like an excited fashion. But I feel like when I did them, I did, I think I've done two or three so far. I feel like the loot quality is just 10 times better than it ever was for Borderlands 2 or the pre-sequel. Like, when I opened it up, I went, holy crap, these are all four amazing guns, that's a great shield, and then you had, like, backup options for two grenades and, like, another shield that were also equally valid, but, like, slightly less for the the build I wanted. Like, every time I pop one, I'm amazed by what I get. And I feel like before it was like, oh, there's just some decent purples. Now it's like, holy crap, these are epics yeah i i think they full heartedly fixed that problem purples are awesome mm-hmm. and purples have the chance at the uh the flavor text now too so mm-hmm. oh, you nice. can in, in <laughs> potentially pick up something that's better than a legendary you have depending on what you're looking for yeah. the stats you want etc with a purple and mm-hmm. every purple i get i actually look at as a viable weapon now instead mm-hmm. of whereas it used to just be picking them up for no reason just to sell to get more cash for no real purpose. It's beautiful. Because I just had one today where I picked up some purple guns out of, well, you know, a couple different loot chests I found. And then as I was going to sell stuff, I'm like, wait, this purple has flavor text. What is this? I have no idea even what it does. Because it's just, it sneaks up on you. You're not used to it. Uh-huh. If it's not just a quest reward, you know, I'm not used to it being really good stuff just on the ground hanging out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, they added bonus of taking that loot and then figure, figuring out what it does. Because the flavor text just kind of mm-hmm. hints at what it does. So you got to yeah. get it and actually shoot it, screw around with it, aim down sights and shoot, and see where, where it all mm-hmm. goes from. Uh, like I got a, a boomerang pistol just today. Fantastic. Nice. And I was like, give it a whirl. And I was like, give it a whirl, huh? Hmm. So I shot it, shot it, shot it. And sure, sure enough, it's a TDR. So at the last round, it flings it. And it goes in an arc and cuts off the heads of every bad guy it touches and then comes back to you and explodes. And I'm like, yep, that's good. That's good. That's awesome. I just got got a a doll that I think it's even just a blue, so I don't know if it was a quest reward or if you got it from somewhere. But it's, I can't remember what the text was, but the very, very bottom thing was, oh, when you reload this gun, it reloads every single one Mm. of your guns. Oh, nice. I'm never going to get rid of this gun. (laughs) 
like I'm going to go into a boss fight with three great guns and this piece of garbage at the end of the game, just so I'm, when I'm like, brr, switch, brr, switch, brr, switch, brr, reload, brr, switch, 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 switch. Uh-huh. Like, that's so awesome. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, the, the amount of flavor text, the amount of abilities in this game so far, just crazy good. Crazy good. Mm-hmm. And we're not even where we're supposed to be. We're not even supposed to be talking about this yet. Uh, I know. No, you guys, stop. <laughs> I can't even here. stop it. That's, I want to talk about how good the guns feel, though. God. <laughs> we're not there yet. We're supposed to get to the news and all the other good things before we get there. Yup. That's the end. Mm-hmm. So, come on. We can do this. Stay focused. Well, one quick delicious bit of news that I want to get real quick. It's not even really a piece of news, but on launch day, everybody from Gearbox was posting up pictures of this giant, like, flowery cupcake arrangement the 2k sent over to their studio that said like bdl3 like congrats or whatever and it was and they had the, the vault symbol spelled out in these rose cupcakes oh it looks so good it looks so cool man i wish i worked for a company that would do something like that for me <laughs> that'd be nice <laughs> it would be although we did just get like big lifesavers yeah today. they gave us a big Sweet. fat lifesaver and, uh, wait like like life preserver or well, that's that was like candy like like the gummy life. <laughs> okay. Oh, the is that what the tie-in was? was? That was oh a life my preserver God. because you were using the. Oh, it, hey, sorry. <sighs> now I'm mad. Now I'm mad. I don't even <laughs> I don't, know. I'm not. That's so I dumb. Puke that gummy that's out the stupidest now. I puke thing. The gummy out. <laughs> it's too late. You already ate it. You fell for it. <laughs> I didn't even put two and two together. I was like a oh, piece of candy, whatever. No. Uh, and and then it like disintegrated in my mouth. Like I remember the old lifesavers gummies; they just stick oh, around yeah. forever. Just chew suck on them if you want to. This one just went, gone. Okay, candy's great nowadays. I love candy. Oh goodness, God bless. Oh man. What can I say? You know, I'm, I got I got strong opinions on candy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's so funny because now you spun out on that. Oh, that's right. That was your original comment. <laughs> Two K sending the the arrangement. <laughs> I'm like, where was Matt even going with this? What are we talking about? <laughs> I was just lost. I'm sitting here like I don't know where we're at anymore. I'm just I'm just hanging out here in the third shift life. Yeah, you know, I don't know what's going oh on. That's right. God. Hey, hey, we're all there at some point on a live mm-hmm. on the fives. Yeah. Hey, that well, was us. That was that was me and Danny last time when you went. Uh, yeah, yeah I you, know. you know, I uh-huh. saw it. I saw it. Ah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh, that. Jeez, oh, Pete. All right. <laughs> so, uh, but I just thought that was awesome. I mean, just that even the publishing company just said, hey, congrats, guys. Here's a big special mm-hmm. thing for you. And they looked totally awesome, totally. You know, they had the whole Rose theme that everything's been going with. Yeah. Really cool. And I would have loved to partake in one of those cupcakes. I'm sure they were super they expensive, really good. delicious cupcakes. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it would have been too sweet. And I would have got sick, just like I always do when I eat something sweet. But it would have been worth it. Because, yeah. But see, here's what they would have done. They would have said, hey, here, third shift, here's one cupcake. And we would cut it in thirds. <laughs> and then it would be perfect. We would have had a third of a cupcake. And you would be like, ah, oh, perfect. A, I'm all right. It's a little treat. It's okay. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Perfect. I like it. <laughs> Holy mackerels. All right. So, keeping on that vein, hey, everybody, uh-huh. Borderlands 3 launched, and with it, we've already got a patch. Do you believe it? Whoa. Yeah, I believe it's it. insane. It ain't the patch everybody's won, because apparently the no. community's already going eight bananas. They want, right? they want all the patches. They want all the fixes. There's, you know, some hindrance bugs. Yeah, you, Matt knows what I'm talking about. You see that face? Yeah, and Danny knows. I'm sure she's read the comments already. All right, everybody. Third shift's going to tell you something right now. Just relax, okay? Relax. Take a breath. (laughs) Goose Rava. The game just launched. When you tell the people, hey, there's a bug here and it really bothers me, they go, cool, we got you. Let us look into it. They can't fix Mm -hmm. it in a day, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't care if you don't know anything about how this works. I don't either. But I'm going to tell you, in anything in life, pretty much, nothing just Mm -hmm. gets fixed by acknowledging that there's a problem, okay? It takes yeah. time. So relax. This this patch that they just implemented was issues that they knew already going into the game that they were already yeah. working on getting fixed up. And now that they know there's a bunch of other issues, now they're working on those for the next couple of patches, I'm sure, in the foreseeable future. 
So mm-hmm. if you're listening to the show and you're one of those individuals who's just like, "Wow, you fixed my problem," <laughs> chill out. Well, they'll get to it. It's a lot. It's It'll a- happen. <laughs> now I agree with what you're saying, but I remember a time on a Friday no, night no. when I had some guy in my ears kept going, "Man, I wish you weren't just a gun running around. I wish I could see you. I wish you weren't just a gun." <laughs> Okay, gosh, it would be nice if somebody would have fixed it and you're not just a gun running around. <laughs> that was like around. two seconds. It was two seconds of going, man, you're just a gun. This is weird. <laughs> it'll it'll out, probably man. It'll probably go away, and like five minutes later, you're still a gun. I went, man, <laughs> you're still a gun. Okay, well, eventually it'll be fixed. <laughs> I think that and the... You not hearing some story stuff that, is the only that one sucked. That one honestly sucked because I wasn't hearing some of the story, and you were, and I'm like, mm. oh, I, I don't know. I guess that, well, cool, whatever was happening. I said, yeah, she said go run over there because that guy's a douchebag, and this other guy's not. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I, did, I did get one where uh, some some enemy for a mission, I think it was yesterday uh-huh. when I was streaming, he spawned inside of a hut and never came out. Oh, no. So he was just inside the geometry. Mm-hmm. And Mr. Beef was just going nuts and everyone was throwing grenades at it. And I had to go back to Sanctuary and come back, but, which, you know, 30 seconds. But that's what finally cleared it yeah. out. Yeah. Still a pain in the butt. But otherwise, you couldn't finish the mission at all. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. I, I think that's the only so thing. So there's, there's, there's issues. And we get it. There's stuff that you want fixed, things that need to be fixed, et cetera, et cetera. However, they did just do one, and we're in a true third shift fashion because Matt dictates this one. We cannot <laughs> read them to you. So if you want to know what they are, you're going to have to go to the site and hey, read them they'll, yourself. They'll or, be in the show Or in, tr- <laughs> in, in true third shift fashion, <laughs> if you do want to know about them, Eric's going to read them verbatim I'm right now. <laughs> by looking over here this. I'm, just, hey, I'm just looking at the ones I wanted to mention because right, there's one. Right, we're going to go to sleep now. <laughs> go I ahead. just want to. B- oh, man. <laughs> Do it. Just do it, Eric. You can do I it. I just want to I'll, say I'll allow it. that the loot uh-huh. tank, the one that everybody's been talking about, all the websites have been posting that it's a Destiny loot cave, all that pajama, they were right. It was real. That loot tank appeared every single time over at the Jacobs Estate. However, they said that they adjusted the spawn rate of loot tanks in Mansion. They're special again. So I'm assuming mm-hmm. that that problem is fixed. The only reason I question that is they say loot tanks in Mansion. I'm assuming that means Jacob's estate because it's a mansion. So I, I mm-hmm. think that's what they're referring to. I'm pretty sure it's referred to. So if you're seeing that news now and you're like, oh, I'm going to go farm it, eh, I don't think you're going to anymore. I'm Too pretty late. sure it's pretty fixed. I do feel real bad for Mental Mars, our buddy who I'm going to talk about a little bit later in the episode. I think right after they fixed it, it was like an hour or two, so maybe he'd scheduled the post because I don't know what time it is over mm-hmm. where he's at. It was like, hey, easiest loot tank to find in the game. And I went, oh, man, I hope it's not that one. Yeah. Because if it is and they just patched it out, that sucks It was. Them. And it patched it out. So, uh, unfortunately, it's <laughs> all gone. Sorry, Mental Mars. I'm sorry, They got Mental you Mars. this time. They got you. And then the last one I want to mention before we move on is that they scaled down the amount of loot drops in Mayhem mode. So apparently what's been going on is that all the big-time streamers, all the big-time players, the ones that are already maxed out, already farming Mayhem 3, going crazy, the loot drops are insane. They're getting several legendaries every single time they beat a boss. And they started to go, hey, this is too much. Uh, We're getting like just tons of drops, and it's crazy. So they went ahead and scaled that back, and we won't be seeing that anymore. So if you were hoping to get that. Who would ever say that? Who would ever say <laughs> well, that? Well, people who get to play <laughs> Borderlands 3 all day and I'm beat bosses over sure, and over again. <laughs> pretty sure I saw Gathalion <laughs> say... <laughs> King Gathalion was one of the ones who wanted it uh, nerfed. He he was one of the ones that brought it up. So Because, you know, the longevity of the game, you want to make sure you're not getting too many legendaries, etc., etc. Otherwise, the game becomes boring and stale and everybody quits because they got all the best stuff in the world. And why the hell would you even bother Fair enough. Playing? So what? Uh, Makes sense. <laughs> for now, however, that's about it. They've got a bunch of other stuff, little things here and there, but you can check that out on your own. It is cool, however, that we've already seen our first patch. That's exciting to me. That means they're on mm-hmm. top of it. Hopefully we're going to see many, 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 many more, in which case we can incorporate into the show and let you guys know any of the big-time, really important ones that you're, you're really itching to figure out. And since I already men- mentioned our buddy Mental Mars once on the show, I'll dial it back around to him and say he had two cool articles I haven't read them yet because I don't want to spoil anything for myself, but he had two articles, like, good for 
you know, people who are curious about certain things about the game. One was, hey, the Moxie tipping system is back. If you've seen Moxie in the game, you know that that's the case. But he said, hey, here's the breakdown of the guns you can get from tipping Moxie in her tip jar. I, I of course, went, oh, okay. I assumed she would get guns. I know Eric got one. And then I went, okay, but I don't want to know. Eventually, someday when I'm flush with cash and I've bought all the backpack SDUs to use already, then I'll start throwing a bunch of money at her way. But for now, I, I'm not interested in, in reading it, but it's cool that he has it out there for people who either know already or know some of it and want to know the rest. And another cool article he had was, you and I had this discussion while we were playing there, going like, man, I wish I knew when I could, you know, when I could equip my class mods because I've had three or four or five class mods rattling around. With the artifacts, we're going through it right now. You know, I'm, I'm filtering out my artifacts and selling them, but I can't even wear the one mm-hmm. that I want to have. He had an article about when do the loadout slots unlock, which is, I mean, it's pretty cool. And if you, if you want to know ahead of time or if you are like us and you're stockpiling up the one thing you can't wear and you just want to know <laughs> when that is, check out Mental Mars' article. He does a great job. I love plugging Mental Mars on the show. He's a cool dude and he does good work. Indeed. I appreciate that very much. I am very tempted to head over there and actually look because I kind of want to see when that artifact's going to pop. It's very tempting, and it's also very tempting to check out Moxie's because, as you stated, I already got one. And I'm like, well, is it succession? Like, since I've already dumped this much mm-hmm. in and got the one, is the next one fixed? And then how much do I got to give to get to it? Or is it literally Man. completely random and I could go give her one more thousand and get another one? Or could I really get screwed and get the same one again that I already got mm-hmm. if I just donate a whole bunch more money? So I'm kind of tempted to do that because Moxie's guns traditionally have been pretty damn good. So it's it's mm-hmm. tempting to go in there and get it if I have the extra cash. But like you said, I should be an intelligent player and not spend the money <laughs> on Moxie. And, of course, finish maxing out all my uh, bank slots SDUs. and yeah. uh, you know ammo slots, et cetera, et cetera. Although now that I think about it, I feel like for Borderlands 2, you kind of got her guns at fixed levels. Like if you donated, you got the bad touch and the good mm-hmm. touch. They were themselves kind of fixed level guns. So it might be nice to know if, oh, hey, this, this one's usually between 20 and 25, or this one caps out at, like, 30. Mm-hmm. So I don't just go in there at level 43 and go, oh, yeah, hey, I got a level 20. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. I, I hope, I hope, and I would imagine that it's all just going to go to whatever you are at the time. But, I would, you know. Since I, since I figured it out, and I think maybe, I don't know if Mental Mars talked about it in his article, about the Veteran Rewards vending machine that's down there by Crazy Earl. Mm-hmm. I found that every time I go there, it's scaled to my level. Yeah. So I don't see why Moxie's guns could be do any the same. Mm-hmm. But, who knows? Hey, that's, that's super cool that that's there now, and that there's specifically a vending machine that's just for that, other than the golden chest, which is obviously different. Mm-hmm. And speaking of Crazy Earl, before we forget and we move on to the other stuff, I do want to just mention I finally went there today with all that iridium, and, man, mm-hmm. I had a good old time. I'm looking at all the heads. I'm looking at the skins. I didn't touch the emotes because nice. I still don't know how to use emotes. Well, uh, actually, let me Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Go ahead, emote huh? at you and say that the Third Shift VIP reporter, Sean Haggerty, retweeted a Kotaku yeah, I article saw that. explaining mm-hmm. how to do it. I saw that, but I was at work, and I was actually busy at that moment when I saw it, mm-hmm. so I didn't go click on it and check it out. And then, of course, as such with things with Twitter, by the time I got back to Twitter, he was already 17 <laughs> pages into the winds, and I had totally forgotten. <laughs> yeah. so. Sorry, Sean. I'll check it out. <laughs> that was one of those things that, like the day after we... Like that first play session we had, I was like, "All right, well, maybe I'll, I'll think about it some more and try some stuff the next time we get on." And then, like two hours later, I went, "I'm just gonna Google it because it's not a spoiler. Mm-hmm. How, how to do emotes? Okay, I got it. Cool. Got it. How to do? There was something else too. I can't remember what it was, but some other thing of that nature. And I was like, oh, "Okay, that's how. You, oh, the, the echo logs. I looked up how to grab those too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, how to replay them? Yeah, I don't remember, but they're in a menu somewhere." Yeah, I had to look up that stupid social thing as well back when we first started because I just said, mail, 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 mail. And I'm like, okay, this is is getting ridiculous. Sure enough, the first time I figured it out, I had like 27 emails. Yeah, I was like, oh, my God, all these guns and all these keys and everything. I'm like, here's all the stuff. Oh, I'm an idiot. Here we go. And, hey, since we're mentioning the social aspect right now, I want to send out and just say, hey, Third Shift community should all be buddies with the social mail system. 
where if you're playing as the siren and you get a head that you already have or a customization or something pass you already it up have, and down the line. pass it up and down the line. I, I, I've been doing that to Eric, throwing him my stuff. And then I think the only person on my friends list, other than maybe Sean, who I think has played a, a little bit of each character so far, mm-hmm. The only other person I've seen who's played Beastmaster is a buddy Low Lines. So when I got a duplicate head just the other day, it's been sitting in my inventory. I've been waiting for somebody to play a Beastmaster. I saw him, so I sent it his way. If you guys see Beastmaster stuff and you don't want to use it, send it my way. Mm-hmm. Let me know what you guys are looking for. I'll send stuff your ways. All everybody, yeah. let's do it all. Let's Sh- all be good sharing gun pals exactly. and get trophies. <laughs> It'll be great. You know, and that that part of it, God, you know. It sucks because I, now I want to break away into the social aspect of this. You yeah. know, like we were kind of discussing IG2G, and I'm sure Danny wants to bring up too. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. There's supposed to be a couple more pieces of news, though. It's, it's <laughs> I know. We're we keep, not there yet. We keep taking these side roads. <laughs> we're dissecting it. But that, that just shows, it's just like playing Borderlands. We want to go true. through and get the mission done. Then we're but do look the at the claptraps dancing around over there with the exclamation <laughs> mark. The That's right. Oh, you can't resist. Right. You know, you're on the topic. You want to just keep going with it. Makes or sense. Or if you're really drunk and you see there's enemies over there, I got to yeah, go, 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 go shoot them. Got to go shoot them. Which <laughs> is funny because, of course, we played most of the Borderlands 2 drunk all the time. So that's what we did. Mm. Playing 100% sober all the time in Borderlands 3, I'm like, mm. handling missions, handling business, easy peasy, mm. straight to the point, getting to the things done. Hey, look, here's a zone I've already cleared. Nope, running right through it, no problem, just getting yeah. to the mission. And I'm like, yeah, this game's actually pretty streamlined and fine if you're not drunk and just killing everything <laughs> every single time you come into an area. Yeah. <laughs> this makes sense. <laughs> no, I, I agree, but it also makes me feel dirty at the same time, which is why I'm glad that there are so many other like side paths and side things that, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for the mission, but if I see this big wad of oval that's unexplored over there, mm-hmm. I can at least run through and be it. like, all right, I didn't find anything, but it's not some giant out of the way, you know, screwing up my whole thing, mm-hmm. which it any kind of drunken extravaganza always was. Always was, yeah, <laughs> indeed, exactly. All right, so getting back on track, before we get into this damn topic, I, I want to bring up that they had the uh, the Twitch Rivals and then the Borderlands mm-hmm. show was supposed to go on. Well, the Borderlands yep. show got delayed till tomorrow. Well, today, as you guys are hearing this, if you're listening to the podcast, tomorrow, if you're watching us now, the Borderlands show is going to be recorded live on Twitch. If you want to check that out, head on over there. Kind of funnies, uh, Greg Miller and Fran Marabella are going to be the ones hosting that. They got Paul Sage on for their first episode, talking a little bit about, and I'm super keen on watching this one because they're going to be uh, talking about the game in general, well, you know, the usual shtick, but they're also going to be giving a little upcoming hints and uh, tasty little nuggets of what the Bloody Harvest is going to be all about. Nice. And uh-huh. that I got to know because it is my favorite holiday. And it always has been and always will be. So I want to know what they intend to do to the Borderlands 3 for this holiday. So definitely check that out. There's also going to be an exclusive, I think it was timed, Golden Key mm. shift code revealed right. in that broadcast oh, too. Oh, boy. Okay. Yes. So therefore, you have to go pay attention yeah, and watch, watch it. it. You do if you want that Golden Key. <laughs> and I do. Because I'm a Golden Key whore. <laughs> That's one. And one other thing I do want to say is I'm really interested to see. I mean, we love the seasonal DLCs for Borderlands 2 anyway, but I'm really interested to see how they'll work it into the this the style of Borderlands 3. Like the you know will the will the calypsos be all over it? Will it be something totally removed from anybody related to the story? That way you could play it when the story's done or before the story's over. Mm-hmm. Maybe it'll just be a you know like a like a Vaughn thing or a Reese thing or something. I have a so feeling just... Eden 6 is going to be where it's going to be based uh, off of. That makes sense. Because it feel, that feels more like your Halloween-ish zone. So there's baddies there There's baddies there that it makes sense for. So, yeah, I think mm-hmm. Eden 6 is where it's going to be if I had to put money on it, and it makes perfect mm-hmm. sense. And I think maybe if we're lucky, they'll kind of do what most games do these days, and they'll just add, like, uh, flavor 
to the rest of the world, like pumpkins, jack-o'-lanterns, and things like that. So that way you just feel in the spirit everywhere. But the missions, I think, are probably going to be whatever the spoopy mission is. It's going to be... Ah, spoopy. <laughs> spoopy. And that's kind of what they did with uh, pre-sequel, mm-hmm. is they changed a lot of the barrels to pumpkin barrels yeah. and stuff. So even just little stuff like that is nice. Exactly. I hope that's what they do. And you're going to know. You're all going to know. So you're going to be listening to this tomorrow, and you're going to be like, uh, duh, you guys. Uh, there, I already listened to the Borland show over there with <laughs> them, and that, that's what they did. Oh, all right, all right. Oh, sorry. Let me say, no morons. Oh, lol, it's on Athena. So surprise, idiots. And we're going <laughs> yeah. Which would be like the least <laughs> likely spot. That's, you're probably right. That's, that's where it would be. That's why it's perfect mm-hmm. for it, though. Look at this peaceful, tranquil zone. Oh, <laughs> ghosts and demons. Mm-hmm. Although, if it's the spiritual place. It is a spiritual ghosts. place. You're right, yeah. Spoiler alert, there's spiritual stuff on Athena's. God, oh, man. We've talked that, about how there's man. monks there. Oh, I mean, it's monks. It's just monks are always around spoiler ghosts. Spoiler alert everywhere. <laughs> this is ridiculous. All right, so let's just talk about when you kill the owner. Oh, okay. <laughs> God. So, yeah, tune into that, everybody. Check it out. Twitch Rivals, however, did happen on time. I'm not going to go into great detail about it, but I will say... That there were several teams. You had Team Gathalion, Team Whoops, Team Sis, uh, I can't pronounce that, Sacriel, whatever, doesn't matter, Team Kriken. All right? You had a whole bunch of these really cool streamers, all the big wigs, all going against each other. And it was like a $50,000 payout to, you know, the different teams as they won or lost, etc. If you want to know the details, they're out there for you. I will just say that Team Whoops took the win, but there was some drama involved because they farmed like some baddies outside of the matches while they were waiting for the next match and got a couple uh. legendaries, whereas the other three teams thought that they were supposed to just stay put and wait and then only use what was given to them through the the thingy or the baddies dropped whilst in the match. And so they were like, well, that's kind of not fair because they were outside farming the whole time, getting legendaries, and then coming in, and they, and then I guess they won by like a minute or so, under a minute. So it's like, mm-hmm. well, if they hadn't had those legendaries, would they have actually won? And so there was a the huge stick about that, but basically the admin said, hey, from ne- going forward, no more doing that. But this time, since it wasn't specified, we're allowing it. So they won. They took home a nice chunk of change. And, of course, Team Whoops, some, uh, one of the individuals on Team Whoops was like, hey, I'm actually going to donate this to a, uh, a charity stream coming up, blah, 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 blah. So it's really cool. No matter which way you swing it, it was cool. It was a lot of fun. It was neat for them to do. I hope they do more and continue this mm-hmm. because it just adds into what we've always talked about on this show in that uh, we want Gearbox to keep doing stuff on Twitch, keep appearing, streaming, uh, doing competitions, doing fun co-ops, sit-downs, things like that. Because it's awesome. Yeah, 100% agree. And hey, speaking of fun sit-downs and co-ops, <laughs> they had the co-op couch today, but I was streaming, so I couldn't watch it. <laughs> I, I was co-op couching myself, <laughs> so I had no chance to watch it. I'm sorry. I, I wanted to because I always love catching that. Because And Elisa put, put out a tweet after she was done saying this is like her favorite thing to do is not only play cool Gearbox and Gearbox-related games, but pull cool people from the company down and have fun with them and introduce them to the community, which I think is one of the coolest parts about those streams. It's this, hey, it's this person we've seen maybe like once for five minutes on a stream or heard Mm -hmm. mentioned on the message boards or whatever. Hey, there they are live talking about exactly what they do. So I love those streams. I'm just really sad that I tend to miss them quite a lot. So I miss them more than I should. I really, really need to get in on them because I, I've enjoyed the few that I've watched because I, I do mm. like learning about the people behind the scenes because I'm a person that's normally behind the scenes. So. <laughs> True. Well, what cracks me up is, you know, on our Google calendars, you put like 50,000 things in there. Mm-hmm. You should be putting these damn streams in there so you remember <laughs> them. Because mm. I had the problem of I remembered it this time. I knew it was coming up, but then Matt popped on. And I was like, well, I got I to gotta be in Matt's stream. That's just the way this goes. I got to do it. So I had Matt up, but then I also, on my other Twitch, I did put them up. So I was watching them play, but I didn't hear what they were saying. So unfortunately, if they had any tasty nuggets, a conversation, any kind of hints, clues, or whatever, I missed it. I feel terrible about it. But, hey, you know, when it comes to supporting third shift, that's what I got to do first and foremost. That's how it rolls. That's how we do it here. <laughs> 
And I, I actually saw they were going live, but it was after. I mean, I was harassing both of you in the Discord all day, mm-hmm. and you went, "Hey, idiot, get on and play Borderlands 3. So I was like, "All right." And so as I was prepping my tweet and going to retweet it from Third Shift that I was live, that's when I saw, "Hey, going live in the co-op couch like in ten minutes." And I went, <laughs> "Oh man, <laughs> if only I had just been lazy and not streamed today, I would have caught it. We could be talking about it right now." I suspect we didn't miss much. I mean, not in the way of entertainment. I've, I'm sure it was right, freaking right. awesome. I'm just saying I don't think they probably divulged any secrets or anything going on. It was probably just mm. some back and forth, having fun with the, the game itself, and maybe a little conversation if anybody had anything to do with the pieces and parts that they saw while they were playing. So mm. while it's very interesting and awesome, I don't suspect there was anything huge in there. They also played Risk Rain 2, which that would have been really cool to see. But, yeah. you know, I mean, here, I did see it, but hear it. So I'll go back. I'll check it out. And if there was anything, yeah. as always, I'll tell you next week. But this week, sorry, I sort of failed, but not failed, not sorry. Because you know what? <laughs> I was doing other stuff. Hanging out with third you shift. Say, I sort of failed, but not failed also. Because right. I did stuff for <laughs> third shift. <laughs> but, I mean, I do want to reiterate, we're goofing around having a good time. I do really enjoy these streams, and I hope they keep it up. Because it's always good to see more Gearbox people, have more interact. And chances to interact with Gearbox, because mm-hmm. when they're doing the co-op couch streams, it's not like the, you know, when they have like the PAX West reveal, it's like 20 million people in the chat, and the chat's just going like yeah, this. Flying. Yeah. The one thing I love the most about it is you have these two cool people who are behind the scenes doing cool stuff, then playing the game, and you can ask them stuff, and the chat is such that they can actually pick out your question and read it out. Mm-hmm. And you can you can have that interaction that you're supposed to have with a Twitch chat, I love like it. it was it's supposed cool. to be. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I, I agree with that. I you know, and I hope to get in there. We got to stop slacking. Gosh dang it! Yeah. Got to stop. It. <laughs> From now on, no it, it'll more be in the calendar. There. That's right. Get it in the calendar. You Put it somebody's got to see the dang thing. I'll try. Unfortunately for me, in real you know RL talk, it always does happen too during like my dinner times and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's just tough because I'm in the middle of getting dinner ready for the kids and everybody, and it's like. You know, oh, I'm trying to listen in and cook this uh, steak up and do that. And I'm like, okay, uh, no more real talk. There we go. So no more real talk. Back into the news. We got a couple bits from slash about Joshua Davidson, who is the, one of the sound designers. I, I, I messed up his whole title. He's the big sound man. He's the sound man for Borderlands 3 and Gearbox. First thing was he retweeted to answer a question from a fan who said, hey, do you guys just use like a RNG you know, random number generator to get the different randomized the sounds of the guns in Borderlands 3. And he said, well, the short answer is yes, but also each piece of the gun adds in its own way to the overall sound of the gun. So as you're getting, you know, for these bazillions of guns, and I've experienced it, I wanted to talk about it but earlier. I'm going to say, <laughs> I'm going to give a quick hit right now. Every gun I pick up feels unique and sounds unique too, which, and judging by his answer that totally makes sense mm-hmm. versus a lot of borderlands two guns you could get the general like oh it's a jacob shotgun sound that's what it sounds like i feel like now in three if the, if it's mostly because of this system or other things everything sounds different and unique and it really i mean it really shows in what he said well yeah and when you're playing with other people you hear that sound and you're like what the hell is that what kind of gun do you have <laughs> what does it mm-hmm. do I agree. I just got a Jacobs Legendary today, or last night, I don't remember which, and it shoots, obviously, like a Jacobs generally shoots, that nice, really, just like real gun kind of sound, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. the special effect on it is that it sends off these fireworks, all right, these these big boomers that hit the ground and have these awesome explosions as well, and the sound Mm -hmm. effect is a firecracker. Nice. It's a straight-up nice. firecracker because, of course, I have set off a Bill b- Julian firecrackers <laughs> in my life. I know what mm-hmm. they sound like, and the sound effect is that. And it's just glorious when I shoot this, this, boom, and then, <laughs> and it's like, oh, nice. it sounds so good. It sounds so great. And it just gives me that just good feeling. Just oh, I can't wait to murder more bandits and psychos and COV mm. pieces of garbage with this. It's going to be the best. Yeah, definitely. And then, so one thing we've teased on previous episodes, and Mr. Davidson has teased on his Twitter as well, his 
Full Sail presentations are coming up on the 27th, so next Friday, as you're hearing this. He retweeted something from, I don't know if it was the person who put it together, but they had the posters up for his presentations. It was like a a day in the Borderlands 3 production process. It's going to be three different presentations and then one panel. And I know he's involved in at least some of those. I don't know if it's all of it, and I don't know how many different people are on that panel. But I know he's talked about these presentations he's putting together for Full Sail, hopefully being able to release them, you know, put them on YouTube or whatever after the fact. Well, the fact is coming up soon, so hopefully maybe in like October, November, we'll be able to see that behind-the-scenes stuff and just get to dig our little our little brain teeth into it. Because mm-hmm. I'm excited. I'm excited for anything behind the scenes and processes and panels and all, all that cool stuff. I love it. Well, it's just like back in the day when you were just loving the publishing crew's little... Uh, re- Where's my user research team? <laughs> yeah, user where they they, at? <laughs> <laughs> they disappear into the ether, man. They're gone. Who knows what's going on with them? Holy cow. Jesus. What happened? So I don't know. I, but, that's about it I got. I don't know about you guys for news news. Oh, I got one more Matt's thing. Matt's got one more. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I can't believe Danny doesn't even have it. Why am I the one who has to say it? I, I don't know. <laughs> There's Borderlands 3 hair color out there. Oh, you got, yeah. <laughs> you got Lilith, you got Maya, you got Tiny Tina Pink, like the little pink on the bottom, and you got Tyrene Blonde. So if you want to be the Firehawk, the the actual cool siren, the good one, a uh, crazy girl, or the God Queen, you can be that now. <laughs> I think I think for the next Live on the Fives, each of us needs to buy a box of one of those and have our hair dyed, and that's how we're going to do it. <laughs> yeah, sure. I, I like this. This is a good idea. Because I don't have to fuzz... buy anything. Go, just, just let, go ahead. Let your fuzz look, grow I out. Applied, I applied the dye. Look, everybody. I'm tiring. You now. got you got fuzz at the back still. Let the fuzz grow do out. Beard. No, don't do that. Oh Men can't God. do that. You can't do that. No. Oh, man. That's not acceptable. But if the if the fuzz was red for a day, come on. How cool would that be? I, I'd go in with, you know what? I, I would sacrifice and I would go into work with blue hair for a day. Yeah. Sacrifice. Nobody could stop me. I would do it, but I'm not paying for this. So, <laughs> if this is provided... You, you heard that? You heard that, third shift crew? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. The PayPal money goes towards improving the show. If this isn't an improvement of the show, I don't know what is. <laughs> My PayPal money just went to us going to Yumicon to meet Jim Feronda. <laughs> not all of it, though. Come on. Uh, the last bit of it also went into the, the chair and the foam here. And the mic. So, oh, man, come on, man. Oh well, I'll, I'll I'll get you five bucks. You can you can perfect. Buy All right, there we go. Matt's got it covered. <laughs> Matt's gonna get me. And we got we got hair. five we got five weeks to accrue. <laughs> oh, the that's Twitch true. You're still right. Come at some You're point right. Too. And that Twitch money, uh, yeah, not even accounted for yet. So, ah, <sighs> damn it, Matt. Come on, man. <laughs> Jeez, oh, peace. What are you? I think Danny's got to go like blonde pink. Blonde if, pink. If, if, if if us men are doing like the big the bright colors, hey, he, uh, yeah, you'll be red, I'll be blue. Daniel have to do go like two tone with the other two <laughs> and see how you like it. Daniel's like, oh man, I don't I'm know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they had a shade of purple, <laughs> I don't know. Well, hey, I, if, you just okay. mix colors together. Just... If if you if you guys do it, I will do that. I'll do it. <laughs> All right, fine. I don't care. Whatever. Sure. Let's my go with a shaved head the next day. It's fine. I my fuzz. <laughs> I've you got have to nothing do it to lose. For a full this. week. <laughs> See, I've got nothing to lose, so I'm fine. Because mm-hmm. literally, I'm just I'm bald anyway, so this is it's fine. This fuzz, this fuzz. You could see it. Come on, it's fine. Oh, I know. I'm saying yeah. I'm do it, but for me, it's easy because you know a week later yeah. I shave my head again and I'm just yeah. bald like I always <laughs> am. <laughs> You guys are the ones that are going to have something to lose here, so. Hey, I don't have that much. So that's, that's true. fine. All right. There you go. Live on the fives, everybody. We're over here talking shop, <laughs> talking about We won't be able to hair, find a place that even sells spread. it. We won't be able to find it. It's ridiculous. This I is don't a know, crazy they man. Sell, they, they sell splat everywhere, so. I wouldn't know. I don't go down those aisles. <laughs> I go down the toothpaste and the you, deodorant. You don't go down, down the shampoo and conditioner aisle? <laughs> <laughs> He just uses a bar of soap. He scrubs his hair. And he throws it down. He's, My hair is washed. I'm done. Why is it so dry? It's you. Oh, man. Really? 
<laughs> Usually, boxes of hair color are in different aisles or on the. They're on the weirdo end of the aisle. They're on the weirdo end. They're on the weirdo yeah. end. Here's for cleaning yourself. Here's for making yourself look different. I don't go down to that Usually, end of the aisle. I don't do that frou for frou for stuff. You know, with the frontage and the, the eyes. I don't know what all that aisle. It's going to men's shampoo. <laughs> Yeah, okay. men's shampoo is it's a just a black box. It just says wash your hair, idiot. Yeah. Don't cool. be it's, dirty. It's usually like a eight in one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seventeen thousand things in one. Yeah, all right. Perfect. <laughs> Body wash, shampoo, conditioner, shaving Olivier. cream. <laughs> cold cocks. Just, just cold cocks painted. <laughs> just by putting it on the it's, skin. It's got menthol go. cooling action. Just yeah. it feels great everywhere. <laughs> ah, wonderful. I love it. Oh, it's so so it's a cylinder and a topical. That's right. <laughs> yeah. There's Works two different both. versions. Two yeah. functions. There's, yeah, oh, that's that's how that's how it's always been. It's been a device and a cream. Wait till there's only ah. one third of the bottle left for the second function, though. Otherwise, it's gross. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Don't you can't wear it when it's on. <laughs> All innovators start by solving. Oh them. my God! What is happening? <laughs> pop up your hair. <laughs> the pop ups have come back. The return. Oh. <laughs> it's impossible. Awesome. It's impossible. They're I coming to get me again. I thought I'd fix oh the problem. Oh, my God. Oh, that's <laughs> terrible. Surprise. Surprise, Eric. <laughs> you didn't fix anything. You left your computer on too long, and we're back. <laughs> It's like the xenomorphs. Well, yeah, exactly. you shot it into the planet. Nope, here it nope, is. Nope, he's right come now. back. Oh, man. Come on. Ah. Uh, I hate my life sometimes. All right. So we've gone through the news, everybody. That's it. That's your Gearbox news. We've gone on so freaking long. This is ridiculous. This is too much. (laughs) And we got to go through the topic, which, of course, is Danny going through some of her stuff that she's enjoyed and loved about Borderlands 3 in general thus far. Now, see, every time we do a live on the fives, I think that went so well. We should just do this all the time. Yep. I will not think that after this. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you liar. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> well, I I liked a lot of things. I loved a lot of things. There were some things I don't like about it. <laughs> so, starting out the game, I, I thought for sure that I would be bored out of my mind because I've seen the opening like 50 times. Mm-hmm. But I totally forgot about the opening cutscene, which I hadn't seen until I played it for the first time. Mm-hmm. And I love the, the music. I loved the whole entrance. I loved Marcus's ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that sweet ponytail. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Matt's got to get him a ponytail with his Russian hat. Perfect. That's not. I can't, Marcus I can't Jr., do that. Man. Marcus Jr., no, I can't you can do, that. do it, Matt. <laughs> I can dye my hair blue, but I can't grow a ponytail. That's not ever going to happen. I was worried. I was really worried about starting the game that I would just be like tired of playing before I even got into the meat of the game, but I, it still felt like a new experience for me because I was actually playing and I wasn't watching someone play it. Mm-hmm. And I've played the opening twice now, and I still love it. Oh, yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> that uh, shiv part, you know, you get to the shiv and then it's like a cool little mini fight and it takes <laughs> you, like, what, two seconds to get to him? Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, all two seconds and you get a cool little mini boss fight. And then mm-hmm. mouthpieces, whole set area, you know that whole the building you go in. I mean, f- they drew you in quick. The artwork yeah. in there was awesome. The cool neon lights and the sounds mm-hmm. coming at you from the booms and the dubs and all that. I felt like they were really just like, hey, let's let's grab you up, man. You know, make sure you know it. This is going to be a really cool, neat, different uh, experience. Even while mm-hmm. you're on Pandora, which we've talked about extensively, kind of being bored of and hoping to move forward from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that. That walk up from the from the front of the broadcast center to mouthpiece, that like constant fight as you're going up that hill, up that yeah. path, and waves and waves. Well, not waves are coming at you, but you're hitting the the spawn points for the different waves. That was that was I mean that was when you first dropped into my game, but that was when I felt like okay, this is like really really good. Like I could feel I could feel the difference before, 
But that was, it was like, it was constantly going. I felt like new stuff was always happening. Mm-hmm. You know, he had, he had badasses coming in with new weapons shooting down at you. So it wasn't just psychos running at you. Different enemy types were in there. And then just the, just the feeling of that area. Just, just that one walk up the hill, that constant battle. And then into his, into his little boss hut was just, that's where it just all clicked right then. And I was like, this is it. Checking out this gun, grabbing this up. Holy crap, that feels amazing. Just, it was good. I love that part. Yeah, it was interesting learning the new controls, like the new mechanics of the game, the sliding and just all that. It it was awkward at first, but I absolutely love it, and I slide just about every chance I get. (laughs) Mm. I I do that too, but I find that every time I'm like, I'm going to slide into this guy and I'm going to kick him. That's when the one person who has a cryo weapon shoots me like one pixel in the back. <laughs> yeah. Like here I go, and I crouch in front of him. Mm-hmm. Like, if this was Wolfenstein, I would be just would just have killed this guy by now. But, I, I, but love, I, I love I love it. sliding and shooting, like sliding around him and shooting him at the same time. Mm-hmm. You just feel like uh, an action movie star. Last yeah. action hero, I'm Bruce Willis, sons of guns. <laughs> Um, That's the last Boy Scout. <laughs> last action hero with Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger, I know. Oh, as that's soon right. As I said it. I know, but it's too late. It's too late. We're live on the fives. I can't fix it. Well, you, you had the last something something. Yeah. You had it right. You yeah, just yeah, had was, the yeah. Just had them confused. They're the same person. It's okay. <laughs> Bruce Willis is like the cool version, and Arnold's the strong version. Okay. Do okay. Want- All right. I'll give you that. That's okay. Um, I will note for people who love the classic controls, there is an option in the accessibility where you can switch to the classic controls if you don't want to learn the new ones. Yeah, Player X showed me that because we were talking about I miss having my sniper rifle always be on up. Yeah. And rocket launcher always be on down or whatever. And he he found it and sent me a picture of it. I was like, oh, that's sweet. But by then I was so used to it that I just Mm -hmm. didn't care anymore. Yeah, that's kind of kind of how I felt about it. When I learned about the classic controls, I was already set on the new stuff. So, but there's that if you need it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I also like that you can turn on the auto climb. So when you're going forward into something, it will auto vault. mantle you. Mantle vault. Yeah. Yeah. Not not if you're walking towards something, but if you're jumping at something. It's just it just streamlines the controls for and me, see, honestly. That's for say- lazy bums. <laughs> Jeez, well you got an auto play button to his <laughs> auto shoot. <laughs> now, see, I'm having the opposite effect though. I'm having trouble. Whereas when I'm jumping onto things and it should it should mantle me or volt me or whatever you want to mm-hmm. call it, and it's not, mm-hmm. and I'll be like, uh, 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 exactly. Like, okay, <laughs> hang on, and then it does it like the second or third time, and I'm like, well, that was really weird. I mean. I almost mm-hmm. made the, it, and I find it's when you almost make the jump. Mm-hmm. Like if you just go like yeah. this, and then you just go like that, and it's like, well, <laughs> yeah. if I go like this, shouldn't I then grab and it'll be okay? And but you have to do it's like that weird, like you have to go like that. You have to you have to really almost not make it at all. And yeah, then and then it'll yeah. get you up there, and it, it's it's such a weird thing. You get used to it, but there's been mm-hmm. a few times where I've been trying to get like the uh, the antennas the. The, yep. the stations and they're yeah. all jumping puzzles surprise in case you didn't know mm-hmm. and i've been like okay here, oh and then i fall the way down i'm like oh, really guys you're killing me <laughs> you're killing me smalls yeah i get that a lot because you I mean you know me i'm wall hack jones anything i can try and even remotely look at like i can jump up i'm jumping all over the damn thing mm-hmm. yeah so I, I get that a lot but i wonder if it's also like me not doing the button prompts right sometimes because mm-hmm. I thought it was like you pushed it and held it and that mantled you and that works, but then I saw the tooltip. It was like, oh, press it a second time hit, during yeah. your jump, yeah. and then that do. seemed to that seemed to work less well than just holding the button for hmm. me. So I'm like, well, I don't. So if you hear me on the stream, sometimes it's just like tap, 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 tap. It's got to work somehow. <laughs> Oh, yeah. get and, it, and it usually does, but it's just sometimes there's those angles, like you know the the paint will be on this side, but also yeah, and you're coming. this side of the wall mm-hmm. is also looks valid. <laughs> yeah, and just trying to because I've I've had that happen a couple times. I'm trying to jump up this giant pile to nothing, and it's like, well, let me 
and I have to like wall hack around, but then I drop down, I'm like, oh yeah, there's paint right straight up, and it's the three easiest jumps you could ever do. Mm. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> shucks. Yeah, I do want to state before I forget and before you continue, Danny, mm-hmm. what the hell, Gearbox? Why is there no Borland symbols in this game? Yeah. <laughs> Why? It actually made me mad. I am on, upset on about it. I am, I am actually upset about it. You know, I'm like, I thought for sure they were just trying to hide it and being, you know, sneaky and coy mm. about it and saying, well, I don't know, we do have Iridium things you can read and figure out later and da da da. And I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, that's going to be fun and cool, but they don't have borderline symbols. They're just, they're just joshing around. They don't. They're not there. Mm. There's no borderline symbols. No, they've they replaced them all with the crew challenges, I believe. Well, what what irritates me about it though is those show up on the map, which I love because I wander around. I go, oh, there's a thing. Mm-hmm. And I don't know which one it is, but I know there's a thing, and I go get the thing so I don't miss the thing all the time. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, it takes away from I'm exploring what what could be around the back of this. Is there? A th- how about under here? Let me slide under. Let me mantle up. I miss I miss having something that's not on the map. That is that is a cool, collectible, super secret bonus thing that doesn't really do anything for you, but it makes you feel cool. Well, it's it's not technically on the map until you show up in that location. So you have to kind of discover it, but then it appears. Even like, if you I know, touched it. but... Yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> but if I'm within, like, 500 feet of it and it, it goes, ping, up. here's a thing... Mm-hmm. Versus borderline symbol, you had there's, to, there's something that's right. invisible. Yeah, you, you had to go find it and see it, and otherwise it was never going to be there. You were never going to notice it. Just like in the one instance where we we're doing the Lilith, and we never noticed mm. the borderline symbol. It was right there, right and Matt took a picture of it, and we still <laughs> never found it. It was just there, and we never saw it. Well, to be fair, yeah. I didn't take a picture. My system did. I got the trophy <laughs> at that time. I was. <laughs> You know, we were something like, impeding my vision. Yeah, something impeding your vision. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, I totally get what you mean. I, I do miss actually finding stuff <laughs> instead of having the game find it for you, I guess. But I will say I love the Typhon Logs. Mm-hmm. He is such a cool character. I love his voice. I love his attitude. I love the way he interacts or, you know, used to interact with all these people. Like, he's a cool character that I don't have any issues with. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I can't say about, like, almost any of the the story characters. Like, I don't trust this character, don't like that character, this person's got... Maybe Claptrap in this one is the only one that I'm like, I love this character. (laughs) But you listen to Typhon, it's like, that's a cool guy, I want to be him. (laughs) I want to go around in this 1940s vault hunting era and, you know, find the first vaults and do all this stuff. I want to be that guy. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, those those logs are the best. I, I look forward to finding those every single time. Like, and then I stop no matter what I'm doing. I'm like, mm, all right, here we go, story time. <laughs> story time. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Typhon, you so crazy. Oh man, I wouldn't jump in poo water either. Woohoo! <laughs> and and he's so funny, but again, with compared to a lot of the other characters in Borderlands, it's like he's funny, but never at the expense of other people. Mm-hmm. Like the funny stuff he does isn't horrible to someone else oh i found this guy and i just cut his head off Ooh, wore it as a hat through three states no it's like he's just a a cool goofy guy who's going around having adventures mm-hmm. i don't know i just i just really like that like pure kind of character in borderlands so yeah i, I like the quality of life stuff that they've added to the game and just feels a lot more streamlined and then some because you get to actually climb on stuff because <laughs> I I was personally one person who had, you know, troubles while hacking into the spots where you guys were. I'm just like, okay, you guys, just tell me if there's anything cool up there. I'll just, you know, live vicariously through you guys. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'll get it later. Don't worry about it. Let's go. (laughs) (laughs) One thing I will say about the mail system I, like you, didn't find it until much later. I had no idea where it was and why I kept getting mail. I figured there would be, like, a station on Sanctuary, but Mm. it's right in that social menu right there, and you can get all kinds of cool things and send all your junk to your friends. (laughs) I I love it just because 
I didn't notice it beforehand. Like mm -hmm. after I found it and started sending stuff is when I started noticing the mail pop ups. Because mm -hmm. I think I just kind of tuned them into the whole yeah, your friends are doing whatever. Uh. But now that now that I've done mail, it's I see bloop C O V sent you something. Wait, like, heck yeah! And uh -huh. I and then I think oh yeah. I've been using this awesome COV gun. Oh my God, there's a gun I want to talk about so bad. I've been using this awesome COV gun forever. Of course they sent me something because this is my mainstay right now. Or, you know, I have been using a Jacob's, that Jacob's shotgun from the Finger Biters. I was using that nonstop. Oh, Jacob sent you something. Oh yeah, this is a Jacob's. This is just my shotgun. I don't think about like the, the manufacturer stuff. Yeah. So when you get rewarded for doing something that you're doing just because you really love it, it feels really cool and really good. Mm -hmm. When you're living on the blood path, everything feels pretty good. So <laughs> You're on the blood path now. <laughs> and this is where I wanted to get to, was, was this yeah. whole social system and this whole interaction with everybody. We were all talking about playing together. We were going to all do this. It didn't end up happening. Pretty much all of us are playing our own games, doing our own things. But as Danny stated, and as we've talked about, it's really sweet how when I'm playing, it's like, boom, Matt just got this really cool legendary. Matt just got this really cool purple. Matt leveled up. Matt did this quest. Matt got this trophy. Matt did this. Danny got this. Danny got that. Shay did this. Da 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 da. So I'm basically just playing my own game, but at the whole time I'm like, oh sweet, Matt just did that quest. That's pretty neat. Oh, oh, Dan Danny got to see uh, the old blood path. <laughs> oh, that's cool. And then like you said, boom, bling. Oh, oh, Malawan sent me another piece. Oh, she is. I better go check that out. Whoop whoop whoop. Go on over. Oh, I don't need this. Boop, flip back in the mail send it off to shay i know he's low level he'll he could use this one Boop, there he goes mm -hmm. hey cool i did a good deed back to plan <laughs> i'm interacting i'm seeing what people are doing i'm throwing crap out that i don't need or or i've gone over and i'm not going to use you know that kind of stuff or i don't mm -hmm. you know whatever it's a head i already have you know that kind of stuff mm -hmm. just throwing them out tossing them out i feel like i'm still playing with people sort of in a little bit, you know, I don't feel like I'm just being that guy who's ignoring his friends and not doing anything with anybody anymore. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, no, no, I see what you're up to. I see where you're going. And hey, did you get that cool thing I sent you? Sweet. Yeah, all right. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and what I really like is it's not as disruptive as, I mean, we all loved it when Sean came into our game and gave us legendaries. You can't, you can't not love that. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's not like, hey, man, let me load in. Hang on, I'm coming in. Let's all stop. Hang on, let, let's get to a spot. Hey. Do you want to, like, let's go into a trade menu and see if you want this thing? No, nah, not really. Oh, well, just go ahead and take it anyway, dude, because I'm not going to use it. Now it's just, it's in the mail. It's gone. Mm -hmm. When I get it, I, I accept it, it, and I go, good or bad, sell or donate or pass on. Mm -hmm. It just feels good to not, you are playing all together and you're interacting with each other, but it's not as intrusive. Not yeah. that it's a bad thing, but you know what I mean. No, it yeah. doesn't take up time <laughs> to to trade or... Hey, check this out, man. Hey, you got this? No, just there. Now it's yours. Yeah. I agree. I'm, yep. I'm super stoked about it. I'm happy they did it. And I can't wait to use it more. In fact, if we get off in time tonight, I was going to get on and I got a couple pieces I got to ship out. So, you know, I'm going to be using it tonight, possibly. <laughs> it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, so uh, there's that. And... I I have been in a squad <laughs> for uh, Borderlands, and I I like how seamless it is to just jump into a game with everyone else. I feel like the map is very intuitive. It it I like that it's three D, and you mm. can see exactly where people are because obviously people just stray off to where they want to go, <laughs> uh -huh. and. The fast travel system is a lifesaver, especially when people drive their vehicle and spawn a whole area of <laughs> people and they can't take them out on their own. You can just fast travel right to their vehicle and help them out. <laughs> yeah, that vehicle thing is not something I use that much. You know, I, I uh, it just doesn't occur to me. I'm just on like the old rules, and mm -hmm. so I'm always like trying to go from point to point, and mm -hmm. it was just something I'm not registering that i can come back to my vehicle so as we stated earlier i off off air was like wait a minute i can strategically place my vehicle where i want it yep <laughs> then i can fast travel out and go get you know stuff sold do things all that and come back right to where you left off and i'm like ah oh, man 
I'm a dummy. <laughs> it saves so much time. It's so great. <laughs> I mean, it does, but this is another one of those things that makes me feel dirty sometimes. When it's like, oh, you're in the you're in like in the depths of the boss's hut, and you're in the gun room, and it's like, all right, go back to Billy and turn the quest in. Now, instead of walking out and getting to the car and driving all the way to Billy's house, I just opened up my menu and it's like, I warp literally to two steps away from Billy. He starts telling me the turn-in stuff before I've even loaded in the game. <laughs> like, it's awesome because it saves so much time and I don't have to be like, oh man, oh, can, I, can I make it to you know bed on time or to whatever when I got this 45-minute drive? So it's, it's so good, but like Eric said, I'm so stuck in the old ways. And I'm just like, sometimes I just don't do it. So I'm like, oh, go back to Billy. All right, well, here I go. Get in the cycle. <laughs> and see, and this mm-hmm. is, I would say if you're enjoying that, Matt, you know, do it that way. It's fun. Mm-hmm. It is fun sometimes because then you might also find something on the way back that you missed the first exactly. time around. But see, this is the key. And second, third, fourth, fifth playthrough is when, as yeah. we will inevitably be doing. And we burnt out because we're always having to spend 30 minutes just running to an area. We've already heard yeah, all the story. We've already seen this crap like a million times. <laughs> Don't got it anymore. Mm-hmm. Quest done. Fast travel back. Boom. Turn in. Next quest. Fast travel over here. Doom. 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 Shoot the little area. Do the little thing. Fast travel back. Turn in. Boom. Next quest. Streamline. Yeah. Quick. Efficient. Still having fun because now we're not doing all the tedious crap in between, which is fun the first mm-hmm. time or two around. Not so much fun after. Unless you're a psychopath who just loves everything Borderlands <laughs> all for all eternity with no exception. You know, this well, there's somebody I, I know who likes that, but mm-hmm. not me. <laughs> and and that, that puts me in mind of something that I'm a, I'm a little worried about with the later playthroughs. I love how expansive the map is. Yeah, you get like different not like different biomes, but like different themed areas. Like you go down here and there's like a little little bandit area. Over here there's like the jabber area or the or the whatever. But I, what I worry about is on those fourth and fifth playthroughs, right now I have so much fun just, like I said, here's a sidetrack and I go to this big oval area and just find out what's there. Mm-hmm. Once I know what's on the map by heart, I'm going to be so sad because this big, awesome, beautiful map that's so expansive and varied is just going to be point to point Jones me just that's the one thing I'm worried about because I I love the exploring I love exploring in here like I get lost uh, not lost but you know what I mean yeah I get sidetracked and it's just because there's this whole big swooping area just walk all the way through it and sometimes find a side quest sometimes not but at least I had a little mini adventure I don't know yeah but that's your first playthrough because that was the only reason why you started getting tired of it at the end there was because you're like, uh, we're just like 40 minutes and we didn't do anything. We just ran yeah. to the next yeah, quest. True. And you're like, I, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah, mm. I get it. That's what I'm hoping for. You know, I agree. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. The first playthrough or two, yeah, that's the whole, that's the spirit of it. It's mm. to go, oh, look at the zone over there. I'm just going to go, woo, I'll sidetrack all the way around, go through it. See if I can mm-hmm. find any iridium stuff, Borland symbols which don't exist in this. Shame on you, <laughs> Gearbox. Shame on you. Mm-hmm. But other side quests, any kind of mini thing going on, even a little text blurb about something in particular, that is that is awesome. So mm-hmm. I agree with you. I just think four or five times down the road, you're going to actually go, yeah, this is amazing because now yeah. I can still play and not be like, Jesus, I don't have, I'm don't. i not wasting 40 minutes of my life running back. I'm not doing it. I'm done, guys. Mm. That's it for me. Matt's <laughs> out. Pshu. Yeah, exactly. Or if, you know, you're a person like me who goes into a fight underpowered and then has to go out and level up and come back, it's nice to have that fast travel option so you don't have to barrel through a whole map again. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And no, you sure. made a mistake and go back and just like grind where you're supposed to be for a little bit. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's an issue that I have had with the game where I feel like I'm going, I'm doing a bunch of side missions, I'm doing the main mission, and I've literally had everything cleared out to just the main mission, and I get to the boss at that level, but I'm still underpowered. <laughs> So, I don't like grinding, but I feel like I kind of have to a little for Borderlands 3. I don't know if that's your experience, but that's been my experience. 
I couldn't say. I'm an explorer. So, mm -hmm. like Matt, I just go, I clear the map as mm -hmm. I go. So, I'm constantly just like, oh, there's a huge quadrant over here. Nothing's over there. Everything's this way. I don't care. I run off this way and I clear mm -hmm. the entire quadrant. And then I come back and do the quest. And then, of course, inevitably, I find out later there's 17 quests over here, but it was only after you did the two main quests over here first. And then mm -hmm. it all opens up. But I always yeah. end up just exploring first anyway. So I haven't encountered that because I just end up killing thousands of mobs anyway. So it's always, always good for me. Well, and I find I'm never, I never feel, now there's, there's a difference here. Because you keep saying under, like under leveled. I feel like I'm always at the right level, but it's when I'm going through doing the side missions and or clearing out the areas when I notice my gun isn't doing as well as it used to, mm -hmm. I immediately go and find something to switch it out with. So I'm never, I never feel underpowered because I specifically go and make the changes to make myself powered up. Mm -hmm. Versus, I think like the, since it is Borderlands, there's the two different power levels, I guess. Because I feel like you'll you'll generally always be leveled correctly yeah unless you just run straight there right but it's no. just it's just the looking at everything the you're gear. picking up and yeah, yeah i think i think for me it's finding the right combination of stuff because there have been some bosses that i've felt evenly matched with and i was able to complete it in one go but there have been others that i've done several times and i've had to find the right weapons and right setup to get through it i guess i'm not used to that and i i mean in my playthroughs with borderlands 2 and in the pre-sequel i didn't pay attention to all the elements so i'm not i'm just now learning all of that stuff <laughs> She's a piece of daddy girl. I know. <laughs> I wish this well, was one of the flaps you could pull down. As pull down. <laughs> well, I haven't played them solo. I've played them with other people who know about the game. So, so you just shoot and have fun and let them Pretty figure much. it out. And you're like, hey, whatever. <laughs> We're doing great. <laughs> so I'm just now learning about all that stuff. So maybe that's part of my problem too. Yeah, I, I would say probably. That's I was that's, gonna say that's most definitely then an issue. You're gonna want to make sure you, you know, get under under control of the shield thing, the armor thing, obviously flesh, all the different types, and and have your weapons equipped accordingly. As Matt said, make sure when you're killing baddies to upgrade your weapons once you start to feel that their HP is not going down accordingly. Mm -hmm. Make sure you go in and upgrade, even though it's a favorite weapon, shoots great, doesn't matter. You probably got something in your inventory that's going to be more powerful and kill the baddies faster, which helps you out. Unless it's got some kind of added effect, like the the gun. I hey, I wanted to talk about it right now. I've got I have a COV flame pistol that uses no ammo. It nice. shoots forever, all the time. It never overheats. It never breaks. So it's, I mean, until it literally does like no damage, mm -hmm. it's always going to be in my loadout or at least in my backpack for. All my ammo for all of my other stuff is gone. I at least have this to just... To do something. Just mm -hmm. run and shoot and set people on fire and do a little bit of fire damage. Yep. <laughs> Cause, I mean, even on its own, it wasn't great, but it's an infinity pistol, so... Right. Who cares? Uh-huh. Got lucky with that infinity pistol, you son of a gun. Mm -hmm. Well, you got it from, uh, from Dingus. You know, if you, if you did the quest, you know. Maybe I do. Now, see, here's the pre and here's where the problem comes in. Here's where I'm going to mention this. The curse is broken, everybody. I got like 5,000 <laughs> legendaries. I don't even know what's happened in my life anymore. I have so many legendaries, I can't even use them all. I'm just like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I can't use this one. I can't use that one. I've put, I, I, I think I have something like 17, 18 legendaries now, and I'm just like, I don't know what half these things do. Just going to throw mm -hmm. them in the bank. I got to keep moving. I can't stop. Can't stop. And I've got some legendaries that are so damn good. And a flat off right now that's just insanely good. It's crazy. I'm living in a, in a strange world. I don't understand. This must be like, like Matt said. Like, <laughs> this is what everybody else has always felt like when they play video games. I'm uh -huh. like, wow, you guys play these games and get rewarded? This is, oh, this is so weird. I'm getting rewarded. This is crazy. I'm just not being punished for playing a game. 
Oh man, joy, oh joy. <laughs> but see now, like you said, you've gone from third world problems of can't get a legendary, got a scratch and claw, to like the ultimate first world problem. I got so many, I can't even use them all. What's, I don't even know, man. I, I probably just threw it in my bank. I don't even know what it did. I didn't pay <laughs> exactly. attention to it. Just threw it in the bank. I don't know what it did. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Sorry, I had to throw it in there. It's too good. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, yeah, so learning learning all that stuff and learning what all of the guns do because, like you guys said, no gun is alike. <laughs> they all do different things. They all sound different. Some of them have two functions. It's it's nuts. <laughs> uh-huh. And that's, that's what I'm loving the most, and I've talked to Eric about this off air. That's something I need to be better about because I'm, you know, going from Borderlands 2 where... You know, you had your types, but most guns, unless they were specialty guns, were kind of the same. Mm-hmm. You know, Jacob's shotgun is going to act like a Jacob shotgun. I, For the first few play sessions, I was just like, oh, it's not better. That's not better damage. That's not better fire. You know, or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Like I can tell that's not going to be as good. Yeah. Instead of putting it on and going, oh, man, this cool underbarrel for the Vlad off or this cool alternate fire or the sticky... Like I just started using an Atlas pistol like two play sessions ago with the, that had the sticky, like the magnet one that would bounce, <laughs> and then it had the the grenade that would light up and tag, like the whole area. And I was like, holy crap! I could have been playing with these things the whole time. Or anytime I get a new blue or whatever, now I find that I'm just like, everything is new. Every single gun is new. Everything feels new, even if it's the same type as the other one. It looks and feels and sounds so new. I got to start getting better about just anytime I get a new purple. That's got to go in and place the old purple, see if I just like the way it moves and feels better. Mm -hmm. Because I'm just so amazed at how even just like like the white guns and green guns, they all feel so unique and fun. It's just, it's wild. I agree. They did fantastic with those freaking weapons, man. It's, it's a game in and of itself. Mm-hmm. I feel like. I feel like the guns are its own game entirely. Just yeah. seeing what's around the corner. It's like a, one of those little, little machines where you get the little toys and, and candies out of. You never know what you're mm-hmm. going to get. And you open it up and it's just like, what's it do? How's it sound? What's it react to? Oh, what's it good against? Oh, that's the best. Oh, I'm going to use this. Like when I, I told you off air, when I found that Vlad off, the one I'm currently using, it's mm-hmm. a blue. And yet it slaughters things slaughters mm-hmm. things better than any legendary i have equipped better than any purple i've got around this thing murders and mm-hmm. i'm like who would have thought a blue vladoff mm-hmm. was going to be this insane weapon that's just so powerful and stupid awesome that i'm carrying it with me for seven levels now almost and still <laughs> using and still just now just now getting to the point where it acts like an average weapon mm-hmm. and i'm like huh if you didn't, if I had just been like, ah, ha, 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 I'm sticking to my purples and my legendaries, I'd have never known. Here, yet here I was. I was like, ah, whatever. I'm Vlad off. I haven't touched a Vlad off in forever. I don't even really like Vlad off. And now I'm like, oh, this is it. Vlad off for life. So anything else, Danny? I mean, uh, I, I think that's pretty much it for now. I, I'm, I don't really want to talk about story stuff yet. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna dive into that. You know, in the progressive episodes here, we'll start going into the story and the missions, etc. Mm-hmm. Yeah, awesome. So loving the feel, loving the characters, loving the guns. There's, you know, a couple glitches here and there, but they they seem to be easy ones that will eventually get fixed. So, yeah. Here's a question. How does everybody feel about the character they're playing as? Do you like their interactions with the world? Are they consistent? Do you enjoy the feel of who you are? Do you feel like you're playing as a character? I know Eric and I kind of talked about this before, but... Yeah, I mean, I, I'm playing as Zane. He's my main right now, and I feel like a, a lot of interactions, I do feel like I am part of the story. I'm not just someone who's watching the story. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, it, I think it was said in IG2G that he doesn't seem to have as fleshed out lines as some of the other characters might. Mm-hmm. There's just some interactions where I feel like, well, you could have said a little bit more, but still, you know, that's, that's, I guess that's his character. He's just mm-hmm. Kurt. <laughs> but yeah, I, I do feel like I'm, I'm part of the universe. 
Cool. Well, and I'll reiterate, I guess, if you want me to here. Moe's is awesome. Just, <laughs> just again today, there was a scene where Chad was doing some shenanigans and wanted me to do some shenanigans. Yeah, with him. yeah. And Moe's is just like, she's just the whole time just following like, yeah, man. Yeah, you sure you want to do that? Okay, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm willing to watch this. Go ahead, brother. You do you. And I'm like, that's exactly what I would say. This is so great. Mm. Oh, I'm loving it. <laughs> and then just everything she does is basically like, yep, that's yeah, that's basically what I'd say. Yeah, basically where I'd go with it. Yeah, that's basically what I'd say. Oh, my mm. God. I'm like, yep, just nailed it. Just nailed it. Everything she talks about, <laughs> they either A, it's just somebody is basically that, that kind of sarcastic, just ah, whatever, let's roll with this. Or B, they did their homework and know, like we talked about IG2G, that that's what the military, that's generally how military people act. And uh, they, mm. it's just phenomenal. I mean, I'm so glad I picked her. I knew I was making the right choice when I did it, but I'm in mm. love. I love it. Love it. Since you mentioned Chad, I will say I love Flack's responses to Chad because he's just like, mm, this seems inadvisable. <laughs> oh, come on, dude. <laughs> Do you think? So, I mean, I, I love, I'm, I'm loving Flack too because he's got, there's so many of those deadpan moments. Where he is, you know, you can tell he isn't just an AI responding mm-hmm. to it. Yeah. Like, but then I feel like sometimes there's like just a little humor in it too, where he talks like a modern person does. And I'm mm-hmm. like, hmm, I don't like, I get it and it's funny, but I, is that really what Flack would say? It's not for me to say, I guess, but it's just, there's just a little bit of a disconnect sometimes mm-hmm. where he's just like, uh, but in, in general, I love it because he's just that. I'm a robot, and this is what I do. That seems really inadvisable. <laughs> this is exactly what I thought would happen. Or, okay. Or for, I do not understand that man. Like, yes, that's perfect. <laughs> now, I, I'm playing Flack 2 in um, my squad campaign, <laughs> and I, I really enjoy the interactions with the the NPCs and just mm-hmm. in general. And I also love my pet. Heck yeah, <laughs> the best Mr. thing Beef ever. Is the best. <laughs> Mine, mine's name is Sniffin. <laughs> of course. Mm-hmm. Yep. I gotta say, I was so glad that I could fit the Hamburger Kid into Flax's name, so <laughs> Mr. Beef and the Hamburger Kid can ride again. That made me so happy. You can hear it on the stream. I was so delighted. So, question for you, Eric: You can't rename Iron Bear, can you? No, like the pet names. Oh no. man, Iron Bear is Iron oh. Bear. Yeah, yeah, and it's put in her story too, so she actually refers to Iron Bear. So oh, yeah, she verbally sense. talks about Iron Bear. So yeah, yeah, no, you can't change it. Okay. So no, I don't get that cool pleasure of naming my characters <laughs> and and having these witty cool names. No, I don't get none of that. Sorry. So question for you, Danny: uh-huh. Are you using the Skag or which which one yeah. are you using? Skag. Oh, okay. I used the spider ant once just because it gave health regen in one boss battle, and I died anyway, so I went back to the skag. But I haven't <laughs> used either one of the other two. I was so like, hoping one of you go with the jabber and name him Eric. So you'd have a monkey <laughs> fling a poo with you all over the place. I mean, Eric Jr. or something, oh, you know? <laughs> just, just never upgrade him to the no. buff form. Just leave him as <laughs> like just a Leave him a stupid little fling and poo. <laughs> Yeah. Next playthrough, I'll just be flack again <laughs> play and play with Eric. That sounds play bad. with me <laughs> on our second yeah. playthrough. Yeah, uh-huh. Eric and Eric. I've got my my boys Eric and Eric with me. <laughs> <laughs> be awesome. So you'll be Zane. They'll be like Eric, 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 and Eric. They're That's all here. Oh, that'd be beautiful. which one's the real Eric? Will the real Eric please, please stand, stand up? up. Stop That's saying right. that every time, man. Okay, it's getting stop. old. Oh, I've been stop. drinking too many beers. Can't stop now. I'm all, it's too late to apologize. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Anything else, guys? That's There's so much me. else. There's, There's so, so much, much else, else, but we can't but keep going, guys. Bad. It's over. It's a two-hour episode. I think that's chat, enough. Chat. What else? Chat. Let's talk about. Chat. No. Chat. No. It's time for bed. <laughs> it's time for bed. So, hey, what are you guys thinking about Borderlands Three? What are you loving? What are you extra loving? What is the greatest thing that's ever happened to you? What is your favorite gun? I didn't even talk about my COV electric pistol with a knife on it that changed the whole way I play. Look out for that next episode. But if you got stuff to tell us, tell us via email at info at thirdshift.me. Tweet it at us at thirdshiftme. Find us on Facebook under Third Shift. 
Indeed, you can find us over there. You can also find us on the wonderful Patreon, where we have it set up like a little tip jar. If you like what we're doing, like what you're seeing, any of that good stuff, consider heading over there and throwing us a tip. We'd appreciate it so very much. All those who've done it in the past, hey, big old thank you and a shout out to those of you who are going to do it in the future, because it's like Minority Report here. I know what you're doing, and I appreciate you, okay? If you can't, hey, I understand. You got to pay bills. You got to go buy Borderlands 3. You got to buy me some skins and other cool things and send it my way via that cool new social system. I understand all that, man. Or woman or they. It doesn't matter. Hey, I get it. You can support us by doing the mailbag. You can do Twitch, follow, subscribe. You could do, I don't know, all the other cool stuff. Doesn't matter. We appreciate all of it. Any interaction with us is fantastic, and we do appreciate it so very much. Absolutely, we do. And, of course, this podcast drops every Friday, so we'll be back in your ear holes on the calendar. Did not load up on the 27th of <laughs> September for our very next episode. And you can find that episode on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Podbean, on Spotify, and on YouTube. And as I always say, if you like what we're doing and you'd like to help us out, please give us a like, a rating, a review, a comment, and a subscription. Any kind of good thing on any one of those good services, because it does help us out, and we really do appreciate it. And now's the time. The time has come. The time has come for Danny to shine. She's going to tell us what's, where to find her, where, what her Twitter is, what her Tumblr address is, what her email address is, what her phone number is, the best times to call between 8 and 5, I find, is usually pretty good, how many texts she likes to receive in a day, her three sizes, how long her hair is, what, how much, I don't even know, your home phone number, your everything. Tell all the people all the things. Well, the next uh, digit in the secret code is 1. <laughs> One. Okay. Yep. And the rest. Yep. <laughs> Don't cut that out either, Danny. Don't you cut it out. I Don't you won't. put in some weird effect that t- t- clearly deletes what I was going to say. <laughs> I will. Anyway. Damn it. <laughs> I'm going to edit the show this time. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Usakoi84. That's U S A K O I. And yes, I do love Koi and the USA. <laughs> nice. And 84-year-old men. <laughs> yes. Perfect. She's a wow. reverse cougar. Reverse cougar. <laughs> Whatever She's a liger. She's a liger. Well, she's a liger. Yeah, I like it. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I will be dancing around the food lion in that lion suit, so that fits. <laughs> Perfect. Damn straight. Mm-hmm. So yeah, find me there. I I post about Borderlands now because <laughs> I play Borderlands all the time. It's perfect. <laughs> and you can also find me here on Twitch on uh, usually on Monday, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. It's been kind of on and off if my uh, you know computer decides to work. So yeah. <laughs> Damn computer! Stupid computers. I, I know it. it's supposed to be glorious, but. It, it has its hiccups every once in a while. <laughs> well, well, Danny, thanks for throwing that out there. All right, everybody, that's been an awesome episode. We appreciate you coming and hanging out here live. We also appreciate you listening tomorrow when you hear it in your ears at work, doing all the things you hate in life. We do, too. We hate all the things in life that aren't playing Borderlands 3. <laughs> so, hey, until next time, though, it's time for bed. It's way past our bedtime. This is ridiculousness. I only got to say one other thing tonight. And that's don't don't, don't, don't forget to do not forget to say <laughs>